at the oh Gretchen's on now too we're at the uh, our virtual board of education meeting our first time at this also um, first to all families and community members I want to reach out and you know make sure that you're all safe and well and uh, adjusting to uh, what is our new life um, and appreciate you working with us through this um, test board real board of education but our first test doing it virtually so um it's going to go basically as we normally do at our board meeting um and uh you can follow along um notice is hereby given of the regular meeting of the board of education of the town of westfield in the county of union new jersey at 12 noon on the afternoon of tuesday march 24th 2020 the board meeting will be held via an online platform, which can be as as assessed at. Did I read the whole thing? I think you have to. <laughs> um, the purpose of the meeting is to transact the regular business of the board and to transact any other business to come properly before the board. This is to advise the general public and to. In I can't read my where I typed it up here. Uh, uh, that we are in compliance with Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975, entitled the Open Public Meetings Act. The Westfield Board on Thursday, March 19, 2020, caused to be posted at the Office of the Board of Education, located at 302 Elm Street, Westfield, New Jersey, and delivered to the Westfield Leader, the Star Ledger, the Westfield Library, Town Clerk of Westfield. Tap into Westfield and patch.com a meeting noti notice setting forth the time, date, and location of the meeting. Dana, can we have a roll call? Michael Bielan. Here. Diamond. Here. Brendan Galligan. Here. Robert Garrison. Here. Brian Marcy. Here. Brian Oleg. Here. Tara Porto. Here. Peggy Oster. Here. Amy Root. Here. Thank you. Um, if you'd like to join us in a flag salute, Kent, I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Very impressive props, Kent. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, I have uh, one announcement and then Dr. Dolan, do you have an announcement also? I do, yes. Okay. Um, this is an important announcement from the Rotary Club of Westfield. The family of St. Joseph's Social Service Center, the Elizabeth Coalition are in crisis. With schools closed, the school lunches many students depend on are not available and they aren't receiving receiving the second lunch Tuesday sandwiches Westfield schools have provided for many years Thursday. with this program on hold while our schools are closed we are appealing for your help please make sandwiches individually wrapped labeled with ingredients with no condiments it is, a vital, it is vital that every step of the preparation follows safe food handling and sanitation practices. We must eliminate any risk of virus transmission. Please visit the Rotary, Rotary website at www.westfieldrotary.com for a list of requested food items. Please drop off donations before 11 a.m each Wednesday, there are two drop off locations north side at the home of Ellen Windorf 529 Hanford place and south side at the home of Ray Kostiak 438 Poe Avenue. Drop off the food into bins and please use gloves. We will also deliver donated canned and dried boxed foods. If you are able to, please also consider making a financial contribution to the St. Joseph's Social Service Center. You will find a more worthy cause. 
visit sjeliz.org to learn how to contribute to their annual appeal. We thank you for the support, and that's from the Rotary Club of Westfield. So let, me, let me just sum up this up for anybody who's watching. Our schools make sandwiches once a week, and they send them out to St. Joseph's Service Center and the Elizabeth Coalition. Since our schools are not in session, they're not receiving those extra sandwiches that they use as second lunch Tuesdays. So we're asking, it's Tuesdays here, no? For th it's Thursday for Wilson, so I'm not sure. Um, so if you can, and you have, and your kids are have interest and you would like to make sandwiches to continue helping um, this organization, and it's very, very important to them, we're asking that you make these sandwiches. If you want to follow the steps as to how you have to make those sandwiches, the best thing to do is to go to www.withfieldrotary.com and there'll be instructions as to how you can make the sandwiches and the what the ingredients are and so forth. Donations then can be made at a, before 11 o'clock on every Wednesday. There are two different drop-off locations, one on the north side of town at 529 Hanford Place and one on the south side of town at 438 Poe Avenue. This information is also on the website, but I do encourage everybody to try and make some sandwiches and help them out and deliver them before 11 o'clock on Wednesday. So once again, if you wanna reach out to www.westfieldrotary.com, um, they really would appreciate your help. Dr. Dolan, I believe you have a It is Thursday. I just wanted to confirm that you all, it's Thursday. Correct. They're only doing they're only dropping off sandwiches on Wednesday because that's what they announced. Maybe they've consolidated down to just Wednesday. Okay. The announcement says to drop off before eleven AM on Wednesday. So and we appreciate everybody who can help in this matter because I know that the some of these students really rely on this food um, you know, for their everyday life. So thank you very much. Dr. Dolan? Yes, thank you. As a district, we have spent the last several years focusing on building strength and resilience in our students. That focus has been severely tested these past few weeks. I recognize how difficult this is for our students, for our families, and for our staff. The interruption in our daily lives is without parallel at least in recent history. And what has become a new normal, at least for the time being, can seem scary and strange. The response from our school community has been inspiring. In the past week, I have heard from parents who shared the many positive ways their families are adjusting to distance learning. I have witnessed virtual staff meetings, webinars, and other online get-togethers by our administrators, supervisors, and teachers seeking to further educate themselves about the best ways to reach our students in this remote environment. Our technology team and master technology teachers have provided virtual resources to our educators and valuable assistance to the entire school community. And I thank each one of our custodial, maintenance, and support staff members for their tireless efforts to lend a hand in this uncertain time. So today marks day six of remote learning. This is no small undertaking. As I said in my email to parents and staff last Friday, our teachers focused first on settling into a routine for themselves and their students. Once settled, there will be time to explore additional ways of connecting with students and providing a richer, more meaningful remote learning experience. Our staff is working day and night to focus on the well being of our students. I'm impressed by the fortitude of our entire community. And as always, I thank you for your continued support. Thank you, Dr. Dolan. Um, and I, I just will reiterate, you know, I know it's a, a difficult time and, and everybody's adjusting to this new learning approach. And it doesn't matter whether or not it's our students, it could be our college students who are back home again. And even us as adults adjusting to working from home every day and and, and what that uh, puts on the plate for everybody. So we appreciate everybody working with us 
to do the best job that we can, which is what we're we're all about, whether or not we're virtually learning or we are learning in the classroom and, and so forth. So um, I do appreciate it. And I know that the board has received some emails and, you know, we have made adjustments uh, to some of the plans that were put out in the beginning. And um, we will continue to make adjustments as we hear back from our students and our staff and as to what's best for our community. So I want to thank you also for that. Um, at this time, I'd like to recognize the public for agenda items only. I don't see any uh, requests coming through, so um, we'll move on to the superintendent's report, Dr. Dolan. Yes, and surprisingly, there actually are two superintendent reports today. They are both required by the uh, New Jersey Department of Education. Um, so um, I will I will do this efficiently since we are required to do this. Um, Work, work does continue even during these times. Hmm. So the first presentation has to do with uh, something called CUSEC. Uh, for those not familiar with schools in New Jersey, the New Jersey Department of Education monitors school districts every three years, and it is called the New Jersey Quality Single Accountability Continuing Continuum, um, locally known as CUSEC. So this process um, actually takes quite a bit of time, and on the, the next slide, it actually gives you a sense of that time. We actually started last summer preparing documents. And when I say documents, I mean a lot of documents. Preparing documents both digitally and um, some reams of paper, I'm afraid, um, so that the uh, members of the New, Jer New Jersey Department of Education can review all of uh, what's required. We also had a district committee. The district committee um, uh, reviewed everything in November. There's board approval. Um, the county superintendent uh, and his office uh, came for a site visit in March, and um, we received um, the recommendation that was sent to the commissioner on March 11th, which is why I have to report it at this meeting. Now, the review committee, I'd like to thank everybody who served on that committee. Um, it took a, a bit of time and it also took their expertise, so I'd like to thank everyone. Um, the monitoring had a number of different segments to it. Um, it included instruction and programs, fiscal management, governance, operations, and personnel. On the following slides, it breaks down what is included in each of those areas. Not surprisingly, in instruction and programs, we talk about st student performance, graduation, data, curriculum, and student attendance. Moving on, we go to Fiscal management, and I think the subcategories there certainly make sense. Moving on, we go to um, governance, I believe, <laughs> uh, which talks mainly about the work of that, that our board members do and the different requirements that they are faced with. The next section talks about operations, many details required in there. And when it talks about submission of required data to, to state, you can imagine there's quite a bit of that. And so important for us as well as personnel. And again, there are a lot of state requirements regarding personnel. So we went through all of that. We provided all of the information and data. The state came and here are the results. Now, Westfield is a high performing community. I understand that. And right away, we don't look at the four 100s, we look at 91, mm -hmm. it's perfect. So I'd like to briefly explain that. Uh, we're very happy that we did receive 100s in um, fiscal governance, operations, and personnel. Instruction and programs, actually all of our paperwork, et cetera, was 100%. But part of instruction and programs includes, as you might imagine, the performance of students on state assessments. And in order to get 100, we would honestly have to have everybody succeeding, absolutely everybody. And not only would they have to succeed, but they have to have grown from the previous year. So that actually is impossible. I don't know of a, I think I know of one district that received a 92 and one that received a 93. And other than that, I haven't heard of any. So we are doing quite well. We're very proud of this. We're also um, happy that once the commissioner presents this to the state board, um, that will be our full monitoring system for the next three years. And we're very pleased that that's the case. So before I go on to my second um, 
second presentation, which does not have a PowerPoint. Does anyone have any questions regarding Q Tech? I'm good. Nope, all clear. All right, thank you. All right, and then there's another state requirement. Um, and Mr. Canera, did you want to give this presentation? Or would you like me to? I have it. Okay. All right. So. Have to unmute. Okay. Would you like to do it, or would you like me to? Um, I'll do it. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, I can't see the slide. <laughs> Maybe you should. Okay. So, Mr. Panera is our assistant uh, superintendent for curriculum instruction and programs. These are his words. In the spring of 2019, Westfield students participated in the first year of the New Jersey Student Learning Assessment for Science, which is administered to all New Jersey public school students in grades 5, 8, and 11. This 2019 assessment is a baseline year, which means that students and the district will not have these scores factored into measures for school teacher accountability or performance. The NJSLA science assessment is not a high school graduation requirement. So basically what they did was give us two sets of figures. They gave us figures as to how students at uh, three different grade levels performed at the state level and then at the district level. So grade three, 29.3% of students um, received the scores of level three or four, while Westfield have 50, had 55% receiving those scores. 19.8% uh, of eighth graders in the state Receive scores of three or four. And um, in Westfield, it was 45.3%. Grade 11, 23 point, or, sorry, 27.3% received scores of three or four, while uh, in Westfield, 54.5 received it. So again, this is a baseline year. They gave us no other context. I'd like to explain it more, except there is no other context. Those are the numbers that were given and then I'm required to present them to you. I, I certainly do assure you that we continue to work hard at science because it's port, important for everyone's education. Those are my two presentations for today. I just have a quick question. The report, um, both of the reports, the CUSAC report and the science report, are those gonna be posted anywhere on our website for if <laughs> you wanted to follow up and look at them? Yes, yes, they will be. So if you need to see the numbers in person and want to see them again, please go to our website um, and they'll be posted on there. Thank you. Um, does anybody else have any questions? No, all, right. nope. all good. All right, moving on to minutes. Um, bear with me because I, I mean, I think I'd remember we have to, would like the board to approve the minutes of the March 10th meeting. And I don't remember, did we have a private session also? Yes. Yes. And the minutes from the private session of our March 10th meeting. Do I have a second? Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody not approve? Nope. Everybody's good, Dana. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, moving on to personnel. I'd like the board to consider personnel items number one through eleven. Do I have a second? Second. And, um, any questions? I do. I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Dolan. I think she has a couple of people she'd like to speak about. I do. I actually will speak to both personnel item number one, which involves um, which involves retirements, and then I also have a, um, an appointment which I'd like to speak to, and that's personnel item number four. Mm -hmm. So first, personnel item number one. I am announcing with regret the retirements of four staff members who have given a total of 108 years to Westfield students. Earl Harazam has been a special education teacher at Westfield High School for the past 15 years and truly has loved and helped her children over all those years. Sally Susan Heider has, has had a career in Westfield for more than 25 years, beginning as a second and third grade teacher. Sally expanded her deep love for literacy to become an elementary librarian and she has brought her collection of puppets and other forms of magic to engage students in libraries at Washington, McKinley, Tamaklis, Jefferson, and Lincoln schools. For 28 years, Diane Eisen has been a caring and committed elementary special education teacher at Jefferson, Wilson, Franklin, and Tamaklis schools. Adept at connecting with each of her students and customizing their learning, Diane has been equally effective in her role as a resource room teacher and as the teacher of LLD classes. 
it was just a few years ago that she was chosen to be the Phil Howard Teacher of the Year in Westfield. And Mike Kozlowski has been a special education teacher in the district for 40 years, working at the high school, Roosevelt, Wilson, and Jefferson, but for the last 36 years, Edison has been his home. So we certainly wish all of these individuals well in their retirements. And then turning to personnel number uh, four, I am very happy today to recommend to the Board of Education the um, appointment of Dr. Paul Duncan as the next principal of Franklin School, effective July 1, 2020. Paul is the outstanding candidate among a field of over 80 applicants, many of whom have administrative experience. After screening the applicants, six candidates, three current elementary principals, two assistant principals from throughout New Jersey, and an internal candidate were invited to first round interviews. The interview team included Amy Root, representing the board, co-president of Franklin's PTO, an administrator, a supervisor, a Franklin teacher, and Barbara Ball. Following first round interviews, the committee felt strongly and unanimously that Paul stood out as a committed, passionate educational leader. Barbara and I interviewed Paul for a second round interview, and then I interviewed him alone. Additionally, early in the process, the Franklin staff was invited to submit their thoughts about characteristics and qualities of Franklin's next principal. From his interviews and in his current role, I am impressed with his commitment to ele elementary students' growth and success, his own love of research, data, and learning, his belief in inclusion and collaboration, and his evident respect for others. I'm very happy to make that recommendation to the board. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Dolan. Um, as always, we appreciate all of the teachers who have given us so many years of their time and their talents and their patience and love of children. And also, I wish Dr. Do Dr. Duncan um, all the best in uh, taking over at Franklin School. Amy, did you want to add anything since you're on the committee? Um, I just like to say that uh, he was really head and shoulders above the other people that we uh, we had a chance to speak with, and it really was clear that he's the best choice. So we're glad to hear that uh, members of the Franklin community are as excited about his his um, appointment as as we are. So that's that's great news. So great. That's all. Well, thank you. Well, we we'll, we will definitely miss. Uh, Dr. Cambria, but we look forward to a long tenure with Dr. Duncan at Franklin School. Um, so, if there are no other questions, uh, Dana? Michael Beelan? Yes. Kent Diamond? Yes. Brendan Galligan? Yes. Robert Garrison? Yes. Brian Morrissey? Yes. Gretchen Oleg? Yes. Cara Porto? Yes. Peggy Aster? Yes. Me Root? Amy? Amy, you're I can't hear you, but... <laughs> yes, yes! Yes! <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Hey, great, thank you. Um, Michael, do you have anything on facilities? Uh, no, we had a meeting that was scheduled, but we had to cancel it. Uh, and we had a meeting originally scheduled for April 3rd that we we're gonna have to reschedule. Or currently on the calendar, we have it for May 1st. We'll have to see if we'll have an interim meeting within that point or whether we'll just meet on May 1st. So nothing else at this time. Do you have anything on, you know, projects that were being worked on or are soon to be worked on and where they stand with the current situation? No, I that's... do not have any. I have not received any notes and Dana was out, so we haven't spoken about anything recently. We, we were going to have a meeting, but we had to cancel it. We're, we're going to have to think about the projects that we had scheduled for this summer, the big one being the door project. Um, if we're going to do that, we have to go out to bid soon, but I, I think that's kind of risky at this point. So I think we need to wait a couple weeks and see where we're at and then reassess. Okay. Great. I mean, I, I said the, world is constantly changing, not by day, but by hour. So um, I think that's a good choice for us to, you know, look at as we get a little bit further into this whole process. So thank you. And when you said, when you said risky, did you mean uh, finding a contractor that can staff the job or financially? Well, I don't want to, I don't want to award a contract that we're not going to be able to go forward with. 
Um, I, and I just, it's just too much up in the air right now. Um, even the whole bidding environment is questionable on how I'm going to do that. I mean, I've gotten some guidance from my association on that, um, but I'd like to kind of see what the state issues, especially since this is like a multi-million dollar contract. I just want to make sure that we have the right guidance if we're going to do a bid, a virtual bid, that that, uh, that we're doing it correctly and and that we can actually have contractors come in the buildings and start working, which I don't really know at this point that we're going to be able to do. Understood. Thank you. Any other questions for Dana? No? We'll move on to long range planning. Gretchen. I don't have any report today. Okay. Um, policies. Brendan. Yes. Uh, I ask the board to approve policy items number one and two. Second. Okay. Uh, this is to approve for second reading the, uh, the the approval of policies from our last agenda and abolishing our high quali highly qualified teachers policy. Uh, both both for second reading, uh, both introduced at our last meeting. Any questions? No. No. Mike Beelan. Yes. Yeah. Ken Diamond, Brendan Galligan, yes. Robert Garrison, yes. Brian Morrissey, yes. Gretchen Olick, yes. Tara Porto, yes. Peggy Oster, yes. Amy Root, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Okay. Good. And uh, had a, a policies meeting scheduled for last Tuesday. That was obviously canceled. And our next, our April meeting, uh, we'll have to see if we're if the schools are back in session or if we're going to do a remote meeting or how we're, how we're going to handle that. But uh, so, so stand by for the next meeting. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, Brendan. Um, moving on to curriculum, Amy. Uh, there is no report for today. I honestly can't remember a time when I didn't have a report, but. Um, our next, our next curriculum meeting is scheduled for Thursday and Paul and I have been emailing and we're going to try to set it up remotely like this, hopefully with a little more time to um, make sure everybody's connected this time. So great curriculum uh, committee members, you'll be hearing from us. Thanks. Thanks, Amy. Um, finance. Kent. Yes, thank you. Uh, I'd like the board to consider items one through and may I have a second? A second. Thank you, Rob. Uh, I do want to call out a, a gift, um, I don't know, a 10. We are accepting a gift of $2,162 from the Westfield High School PTSO to purchase a ceiling projector for room 141. So we'd like to thank them for their gift. Um, any questions on the finance section? We're... I just want to explain something. I know I told all the board members, but the, the reason that the budget showing there again is just that I had added at the last minute a couple of capital projects that may, we may do next summer summer of 21 and i forgot to change the totals on the resolution so none of the important numbers like tax levy are changing it's just the uh totals so that's all you're approving today thank you i have a question dana number four i'm sorry if it was in your friday notes the emergency generator installation what's mm -hmm. Is that just remnants from the work that was previously done, or did we have an issue? And no, this is just a change order for additional things that we added that we had to have the contractor do as we were going through the, the job. And now we're ready to, we're trying to close out all the documents and we had not had that change order approved. Okay, thanks. That's it, yeah, roll call. Mike Beelan? Yes. Ken Diamond? Yes. Brendan Galligan? Yes. Robert Garrison? Yes. Brian Morrissey? Yes. Gretchen Oleg? Yes. Tara Porto? Yes. Peggy Astor? Yes. Amy Root? Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, move on to technology. Rob, do you have anything for us? No, our technology meeting from Friday was canceled. We have one slated for the 24th. Uh, maybe there'll be some emails or some other information exchanged uh, between now and then, but uh, nothing new. Okay. Thank you. Um, 
I'd like the board to consider the notes for the record. Okay. Uh, moving on, do we have any unfinished business to discuss? No. Um, any new business? I'm assuming we don't have any liaison reports, but if anybody had anything happen before we went into <laughs> mode. Um, no? Okay, we're good with that. So at this time, I'd like to recognize the public for questions or comments. Um, if you do, if you're on and you have any questions or comments, you'll see over on the right hand side, there's a section for you to type in a question. Um, We'll give a couple minutes just to see if anybody wants to type in any questions. I'm actually not seeing it on my screen. So if anybody sees it come up on their screen, please just do a shout out. Nothing there right now. Nothing, Nothing there right now. I can. Right. I see it as an option. Oh, hey, there's Julie. one. Can you see? Yeah. Thank so, you. Yes. Yeah. We have um, a former board member, Ginny Lights, thanking us for uh, thanking the board rather for your service. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Jenny. Be safe. And I'm afraid my computer just died, but I think my audio is still connected, guys. Hmm. Okay, we can hear you. We can still hear you. Okay. That's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, seeing nobody else come forward with a question on our uh, our little question line. Um, I'm going to move for adjournment and once again, I'm going to ask if somebody has the, um, the closing statement, if there is any, I don't have it on the printed version. I have here a little bit of a techni technology glitch here. You don't need a statement. We don't have executive session. Okay. So we just I need a second a that we adjourn. Second. And then second. second. Mm -hmm. so we wish everybody in the community the best um, in the next couple of weeks, and I'm sure we'll be back to you sometime. I don't know whether it'll be on our next board meeting, which I believe is scheduled for April 28th. 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 Wow. Okay, I'm looking at the wrong date on my calendar. April 28th. So um, we'll, we, we'll be back with some updates, um, hopefully letting you know when we We'll be going back to school and getting life back to normal, but we'll have to wait and see what's out there for us all. So thank you if you tuned in and, um, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at um, on our emails. And, and thank you all of you for making yourselves available today. Appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Spring break. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. 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 Bye.